That's strange. My vision is blurred. Are you sick, Grandpa? What's wrong? I can't see with my left eye. That's it. I must be getting old. Grandpa, you should talk to your doctor. I'm pleased how well Ludovine is doing at school. Yes. She's doing really well. <laughs> Come here, I'll call emergency. You have had a stroke, also known as a CVA, cerebrovascular accident. In this film, we will show you the various stages of care you will receive in the emergency ward to help you understand what has happened and enable you to identify possible signs of recurrence. We will also explain how to prevent having another CVA. Sometimes an attack lasts only a short time. This is known as a transient ischemic attack, or TIA. Possible CVA, high blood pressure accompanied by speech problems and weakness of the arm. Would you please alert the neurologist on call? Okay. This film deals with me? both CVAs and TIAs, which share the same warning signs, function in a similar way, and have identical risk factors. A CVA needs to be dealt with immediately. Every minute counts. The faster the treatment, the better one's chance of survival. Tighten your fingers. Can you see the fingers? Follow the finger. Your vital functions are carefully observed while you are in the emergency ward. Treatment based on the cause of your cerebrovascular accident is adapted to your particular needs. You said earlier that he had a problem the day before the attack occurred. Yes, he was reading his newspaper and then he suddenly had trouble seeing. I just don't understand. He's normally very healthy. He had a cerebrovascular accident. This means that not enough blood was getting to his brain and in particular to the cerebral mm -hmm. arteries that control language and the right side of the body. According to what you have said, I believe that what happened yesterday was a warning sign, what we call a transient ischemic attack. This means that the clot that occluded his artery dissolved by itself. Now a new clot is formed. We will treat him for this and try to open the artery. A cerebrovascular accident provokes a sudden disturbance of the cerebral blood flow, the blood flow that brings oxygen to the brain. Most of the time, a CVA occurs when a blood clot obstructs a blood cell. This is known as an ischemic stroke. A ruptured blood cell can also cause a cerebrovascular accident. However, this is rare. In such cases, it is known as an intracerebral hemorrhage or hemorrhagic stroke. CVA symptoms are persistent, with a cerebral lesion often detected using radiology, a CT scan, or magnetic resonance imaging. A transient ischemic attack, TIA, is similar to an ischemic CVA in that it is caused by a blood clot in a blood cell and temporarily obstructs the cerebral blood flow. TIA symptoms usually last less than an hour and no cerebral lesions appear during the radiological examination. The risk of having a CVA in the days following a TIA is very high. So even if your TIA symptoms have disappeared, you must immediately consult a doctor. Time is of the essence, from the first symptom on. Most of the time, a CT scan will confirm that a CVA has occurred. A treatment called thrombolysis can be performed if the symptoms began not more than six hours before. This is the ideal situation. As the doctor explained to you, I'm going to inject a drug that will dissolve your blood clot. The first injection goes directly into the catheter. Then, I'll install a syringe pump that will feed the drug into your system for one hour. That's the treatment. The thrombolysis dissolves the blood clot that obstructs your blood vessel to ensure successful re-irrigation of the brain. You probably won't feel it in your veins or anywhere else. However, you will be aware of it if your eyesight 
or if your speech improves, or if your arm begins to move. The use of Doppler sonography enables us to visualize the cerebral arteries in order to measure how well the thrombolysis has dissolved the blood clot. Try to squeeze my fingers, the right. Try again. Good. Very good. Very good. Now try to hold your arm out. It's working. Great. If the intravenous thrombolysis doesn't have the desired effect, the medical team may choose to perform an intra-arterial thrombolysis. If it is impossible to perform a thrombolysis, either because the attack occurred more than six hours before or the patient does not meet certain medical requirements, then he or she will be transferred to a neurovascular surveillance unit for optimal rapid care. Do you know the symptoms of a CBA? Partial paralysis or hemiplegia, weakness of the muscles on one side of the body, face, arms and legs, numbness of any part of the body, difficulty in pronouncing words, finding the right ones, understanding simple questions, incoherent speech or slurring, visual problems such as brief loss of vision in one eye, seeing double or the absence of vision on one side, dizziness and problems with balance, feeling like one is at sea, persistent unusual headaches, not responding to medication. If you experience one or several of these symptoms, you must immediately contact the emergency number in your area. Medical care must be administered to a CVA victim as soon as the healthcare workers arrive at their home. We've installed the equipment needed to control your blood pressure and pulse. You must stay in bed without getting up in order to ensure that your brain is successfully irrigated. The first 48 hours of care and monitoring in the neurovascular unit will help you recover and improve your condition. I'm just going to prick your finger. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Good. Mm -hmm. Your arm's better. Uh, it's starting. The patient must absolutely stay in bed in order to ensure that the brain is well irrigated. Hello, Mr. Berger. How are you? Ah, your grip is improved. I feel better. Yes, you are improving. The drug treatment we have given you is working. I'm just going to do some tests. Can you place your two arms in front of you like this? Yes, that's so much better. Now, please repeat after me. I am in hospital. I am in the hospital. Now show your teeth. Smile. Good. Now that's real improvement. Much better than it was a little while ago. Now you'll have to stay in this intermediary care unit for now. We will then transfer you to the next unit, which is a special unit for stroke care. You are now transferred to another sector of the neurovascular unit. Nurses and nurses' aides attend to your personal hygiene and comfort 24 hours a day and adapt their care to your ability to function and your living habits. They administer the prescribed treatment while they observe changes in your state of health and physical condition. I want to tell you that since your stroke was essentially due to certain risk factors, to those we have discovered and those you already knew about, that is to say extremely high blood pressure, we have instigated a drug treatment that must be taken over a long period of time. Your doctors will regularly adjust your treatment. They will also gladly meet with your family. As the doctor has already mentioned, this is a long-term treatment. You must take the right dose at the right time. Mm -hmm. And you must inform your doctor okay. if there's any problem. You have to be serious about this. I am. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're going to get up. So to get up, to do so, you need to use both arms, lean forward, very good. A number of specialists work in close collaboration on your rehabilitation. These healthcare teams appraise your motor functions and sense awareness, as well as any improvement in your ability to speak, understand and pay attention.
Good. That's good. Chai. I, I don't know if you feel it, but look, your shoulder tends to move upward. Lower your elbow and place it where you can. As the doctor said, Mr. Berger, we'll talk about risk factors. Do you still want to discuss this? Yes, that's fine. I'd like you to look at this poster of risk factors. Do you already know them? Yes, they've gone on and on about it. I know all about it. You know them well. Yes. Could you come nearer and move the slider to indicate which ones you think concern you? Okay. So, um, cholesterol, that's one. Well, tobacco, I have a problem with that. Yeah. And, well, there's one here as well. Uh, well, maybe um, a little less. Seeing what you've indicated, is there a particular risk factor you plan to work on? Um, well, tobacco. Tobacco. Yes. Smoking. Do you plan on smoking less? No, I've stopped smoking here. You've stopped? It's really hard, uh, not smoking. Yeah. Sometimes I want to, yeah, especially since there's not much to do around here. So boredom pushes you to, right. to smoke again. I suggest then that you meet the nurse who specializes in nicotine addiction. You have two possibilities upon leaving the neurovascular unit. Some patients, like Mr. Berger, can return home. However, rehabilitation in the Beausejour Neuro Rehabilitation Service will be necessary for others. Okay, today I'd like you to try washing your hands. Can you try rolling up your sleeves, please? Open your hand. The occupational therapist's job is to evaluate, re-educate, and invent things to help the patient have as much autonomy at home as possible. Try drying Thank your you. hands. I'll help you. There. Okay, now position yourself like this and try lifting your leg, your left leg. Ah, you have good balance. Thank you. Okay, now try... A multidisciplinary like team made up of doctors, nurses, nurses' aides, physiotherapists, neuropsychologists, speech therapists and social workers assists you in your rehabilitation. Now keep your legs stiff. Although rehabilitation brings indisputable benefits, it cannot Very heal good. brain damage. Our goal is to help you attain greater autonomy in your daily life. Very good. Is that let lettuce? Hmm. Yes, we'll use it all. Well, of course. Then we'll put it in the fr fridge. Richard Berger has returned home. Although he speaks slowly, he hasn't had any problem performing his daily activities. Recuperating muscular strength and mobility varies from one person it's to another. Your sensory awareness might be diminished and you may sometimes experience pain. Normally speaking, one recuperates the most in the months following a CVA. If necessary, you may continue your rehabilitation program as an outpatient. Now we'll try to apply pressure on this arm. Ah, it's still a bit weak. So now, place your weight on your elbow, here, as if you were lying on the beach, and try to reach the ball with your other hand, here, where I'm holding it. Let's go. Mr. Berger visits his physiotherapist twice a week to work on certain right arm movements. You can feel it. Each time I push here, it works your shoulder. How is it going? Tell me how things have been since you left. Oh, I've greatly improved. Uh, I see my physiotherapist who makes me do movements to help me recover slowly. Uh, I still have a problem holding a needle and thread, but <laughs> my wife usually does that anyway. I wasn't allowed to do that before anyway. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm performing most of my normal activities again. Yeah. Now about your cardiovascular risk factors, uh, I must reiterate how important this is. The risk of your having another stroke lies in the balance. You must be rigorous in taking your medicine regularly and checking your blood pressure and the other risk factors in order to reduce your chances of having another attack. 
Aging blood vessels as well as heredity play an important role in creating the conditions for having a CVA. However, more than half the cases are due to atherosclerosis. This disease, which affects both large and small arteries, progresses slowly as bodily substances, mainly fats, attach themselves in layers to the arterial walls, forming plaques that reduce the diameter of one's blood vessels and, as a result, also reduce the blood flow. Although age and hereditary predisposition are risk factors which cannot be altered, high blood pressure, smoking, cholesterol, diabetes, the consumption of alcohol, stress, sedentary living and excess weight can be addressed. Drug treatment depends on diagnosis. Antiplatelet and antihypertensive drugs, statins and more rarely anticoagulants, can be prescribed. Individual treatment is adapted to different kinds of lesions. Respecting one's drug treatment is important in order to ensure positive long-term improvement. One should never stop one's treatment without first consulting their doctor. Suffering a CVA, hospitalization and rehabilitation are difficult for you and your loved ones. For optimal treatment and in order to avoid a relapse, your participation is essential. Recovery demands enormous physical effort, willpower and perseverance. Most patients find the necessary strength to adapt to these changes within themselves and their families. Healthcare teams are also there for your loved ones when the need arises.